Okay, so in this next video in the playlist on cancer, we are going to talk about the extrinsic apoptosis pathway. Okay, so this is a way of getting a cell to commit suicide by external signaling, basically. So extrinsic apoptosis pathway. Okay, and it's something that um, white blood cells use a lot uh, to kill virally infected cells and also uh, to kill um, cancer cells in some cases. Okay, so the extrinsic apoptosis pathway then. Right, so on the surface of all cells, you have a receptor known as the FAS receptor, or the FAS receptor is probably a better way of pronouncing it. Okay, so here, let's say this is the FAS receptor, okay? And it has a very important internal domain, which I'll talk a bit about in a moment. So this out here is the FAS receptor. Right, okay. Now, um, this intrinsic domain here, this internal domain, is what is known as the FAS-associated death domain, or just the death domain, or it's often abbreviated to FADD for FAS-associated death domain. And there's a lot of um, death domains and death-affected domains and all of that in this pathway, uh, so I apologise for the terminology now. FAS-associated death domain. Right, and you'll also people, hear people just refer to that as the deaf domain. So if you hear people calling it the deaf domain, that's what they're talking about. Right, so when the ligand for the FAS receptor uh, is bound to the FAS receptor, and this is often, this is, uh, well, this is nicely called just the FAS ligand, so I'll colour this in. So let's have the FAS ligand in uh, pit red. So this is basically the signal for this cell to commit suicide. And the FAS ligand, I want to stress, this is not just some, um, this is not just some molecule you secrete into um, the blood. Of course it's not being secreted into the blood. It is a molecule on the surface of a cell which is being specifically shoved into the face of this other cell. So this is not just, you know, left off, left to diffusion, basically. This is a ligand that is specifically pressed against another cell which you want to kill. So it's not it's not a diffusible ligand. This will be on the cell of some T lymphocyte or, or some natural killer cell. It'll be on the surface of some lymphocyte though. Okay, so here's our lymphocyte. Right, so uh, a CD8 lymphocyte or a natural killer cell, I believe, both have these fast ligands on their surface. Okay, right. So fast ligands are going to bind to the fast receptors, and when they do, it's going to cause an activation of this fast associated death domain, this internal domain of the fast receptor here. Okay, and when this um, fast associated death domain is activated, it can associate with another protein, which I'll draw here. So let's show this protein associating now. And I should not have drawn that protein there. This is going to get in the way later. Right, so this protein has another domain which is identical to this, well, very similar to this um, FAS-associated death domain here. So this is another FAS-associated death domain, another FAD or a death domain. And then this domain over here is what's known as the death effector domain. Okay, or DED for short. So this is the death effector domain. Okay, or DED. Right, and the entire protein, this entire protein with the fast associated death domain and the death effector domain, this entire protein here is known as the fast associated death domain adapter protein or the FAD adapter protein. Okay, so that's what this is referred to as the FAD adapter protein, which means the FAS associated death domain adapter protein. Okay, and uh, when the FAS receptor is activated by the FAS ligand binding to it, uh, and the uh, FAS associated death domain becomes active, what happens is this FAS associated death domain adapter protein is going to bind to this. Um, to this um, internal FAS-associated death domain of the FAS receptor. So the two 
fast associated def domains are going to dimerize together, basically. So here's the uh, fast associated def domain on the fast receptor. And now we've got this other def domain, which is on the fad adapter protein. So here we go. So they dimerize, and now this def effector domain is now um, free to the cytoplasm, basically. Okay, and now another protein with a def effector domain is going to come and mount on here and dimerize with the def effector domain uh, that, uh, from, that's been provided by the fad adapter protein. Okay, so uh, the next protein that's going to come along is a procaspase. And this procaspase is linked to a def effector domain here. So here's our procaspase here. So we've discussed caspases in the previous video. They are made basically by procaspases. Okay, so this is a procaspase. And basically, in uh, ahead of its... Um, Ahead of its prodomain over here, so remember this bit here was the prodomain of the procaspase, this sort of um, slanted bit here. Uh, ahead of the prodomain, you have a um, def effector domain. So this is the procaspase here. Okay, and let me colour in the different portions of it. So this basically is another def effector domain. And not all procaspases can have def effector domains put on them like that. In fact, not all caspases do have these. So specifically, this is a procaspase 8 or a procaspase 10. So only the procaspases 8s and the procaspases 10s, uh, procaspase 10s, have... Um, have this def effector domain upstream of their uh, pro domain, which is this portion in pink here. So this is the pro domain of the um, of the um, pro caspase. Pro domain. All pro caspases have those. Okay, and then downstream of that, we have this um, large subunit in blue here. Okay. And then the small subunit in pink. Oh, well, I'm not going to draw the pink actually. I'll do it in yellow. Yellow. So the small subunit is then in yellow down here. Right, so I'll label those up as well. So here comes in our procaspase 8 or, or procaspase 10. So remember, there are 12 different caspases. Uh, and pro procaspase 8 and 10 are specific examples of procaspases. So this is the large subunit. And what's special about these procaspase 8 and 10s are that they have these def effector domains as well. And this is the small subunit. Okay, so what's going to come and happen is that this procaspase 8 or procaspase 10 is going to come and mount on this def effector domain that was a uh, part of the fad adapter protein which has now mounted onto the active fast receptor. So, you're going to get this happening, basically. So here's the def effector domain of the procaspase mounted on here. And now, here's the rest of the procaspase. So, here's the prodomain. Then we have uh, the large subunit, and then the small subunit here. Okay, right, so colour those things in. So, again, this is the... Um, this is the def effector domain that was attached upstream of the prodomain of this procaspase, and that's only the case uh, for procaspase 8 and 10. So only procaspases 8 and 10 are going to be able to mount onto these activated um, fast receptors in this way. Okay, right. So they, they are very important in activating, therefore, the extrinsic apoptosis pathway. Right, okay, so... Here we have our procaspase 8 or our procaspase 10 mounted on to our FAS uh, receptor via this uh, FAS-associated DEF domain adapter protein here. And uh, now this entire, um, this entire structure here is known as the DEF-inducing signal com signaling complex. So this entire structure, the FAS ligand with the FAS receptor, with its FAS-associated DEF domain, with the FAD adapter protein, and now with the procaspase 8 or 10, this is known as the DEF-inducing signaling complex. Okay, so this is the DEF-inducing signaling complex. And that's a bit of a mouthful, 
So, uh, people often abbreviate it to DISC, and I think someone who came up with that name must have been very pleased with themselves. DISC. Right, so that's the name given to this entire great big structure that I've got here now. So, let me highlight it. So, the DISC, or the Death Inducing Signaling Complex, is this entire structure that I'm now outlining in blue. And this is going to be the end of my blue pen, I think. It's going to give in on me now. Been loyal for so long. Oh, yep, it's given in. Right. Um, so, we'll have to finish it in pink. This all look ridiculous, but never mind. Okay. There is our death-inducing signaling complex, encircled in blue and pink. And now the pink makes the blue look pathetic, so I'm going to have to re-outline the blue again. This pink highlight is far more thick than the blue pen. Okay, so there we go. There is our death-inducing signaling complex, our disc. Right. Now what happens, basically, is that these procast phases break apart now that they're part of this disc. And specifically, the large subunit and the small subunit break off. So the large subunit breaks off this prodomain, and also it breaks apart from the small subunit. So what you get are these large and small subunits cleaving off, basically, from the death-inducing signaling complex. Okay, right. And now what happens is these are going to actually go away and form active cast phases. And the way they form active cast... Oh, um, uh, the blue pens come back to... Well, there we go. I'm going to have to rethink uh, the colouring scheme now because the blue pen has died. So, um, the way these form active cast phases is you need two large subunits uh, with two small subunits. So these are the small subunits in the middle here. And then here's the large subunit here. Okay, right. So that's the structure, basically, of a uh, caspase enzyme. So I'm going to prevent... I'm going to um, replace the blue pen with this pink pen. So these are the large subunits now, which were formerly covered in blue. So this is this subunit here. So you've got two of these together with two of these small subunits, basically. And uh, these small subunits... And the large subunits together, this complex, is an active caspase. So this is an active caspase enzyme. Okay, and you might ask, well, where are we getting these other two from? Because we've only so far got two from our uh, death-inducing signaling complex. Well, the fact is you're going to have many fast receptors, and they're all going to be near one another. So you're going to be able to form uh, these complexes because they're all going to be producing large and small subunits. So producing these active uh, caspases is not too difficult. Okay, and we'll discuss what these active caspases are now going to do. And specifically, wait a second, specifically they are uh, caspases 8 and caspase 10. So this is either caspase 8 or caspase 10, which are the only ones that so far have um, been activated. Okay, and we'll see what they do in the next video.